Hello everyone, welcome to IMS Gate Academy. I welcome you all in this foundation course on theory of machine subject. As we have already started our theory of machine subject and we have covered three lectures in which we have covered our basic introduction part of a theory of machine and we have discussed about kinematic link, kinematic joint and mechanism as well. Right. So in this particular lecture today, I will be discussing about degree of freedom of a given mechanism and this is one of the most important topic in most of the competitive examinations like gate and engineering services and also the PSU examinations. So please stay tuned in this particular lecture and if you have any doubt you can ask in the live chat also. Right. So let's get started guys. Uh, first of all please uh, join this telegram group where you will be getting all the information regarding the foundation classes schedule. Apart from that, latest job notifications and daily quizzes will be there which will help you in your competitive exam preparation, right? And one more important thing as we have started our live online program and there are some features that you need to understand for the live online programs like 800 hour of sessions will be there, right? And apart from that, you will be getting gate question bank booklet and also the exercise booklet and theory booklet. For the extra practice, you don't need to look for any reference material because the exercise book is completely sufficient with respect to gate examination. And the most important feature of live online program is 12 mentorship sessions. These are the personalized mentorship sessions where you can directly discuss with the faculty regarding the challenges you are facing in your gate preparation. The doubt solving portal is always available. You can just take a photo of your doubt and directly post in the doubt solving portal and your doubt will get resolved within 24 hours, right? And there is also a facility of the online test series that you can uh, take in which you will be getting chapter test, subject test, multi-subject level test and finally mock test as well. So if you want to understand more about the live online program, you can directly book a counseling session just clicking on this number. Okay, directly you can call on this number and you can book your free counseling sessions where you will be getting every information regarding the live online program. Right. So now we'll enter into our today's lecture guys. Uh, hi Matan, very good evening. Okay. So first of all, the degree of freedom part. What do you mean by degree of freedom? Okay. As I already told you, in competitive examination, you will definitely find the questions from the degree of freedom. There will be some mechanism given to you and they will be asking, calculate the degree of freedom of a given mechanism. Right. So you need to understand degree of freedom of a mechanism is equal to the number of independent. Here the word is very important, independent. Whatever variables we are taking, that variable has to be what independent here. Okay. So we should underline that part here. Okay. Independent parameters that are required to uniquely define its position at any instant of time. Right. So this is a very important information. For a given mechanism, we should know what is the degree of freedom. Okay. So degree of freedom is also called as mobility. Right. Another name of degree of freedom is mobility. So minimum independent number of parameters are required so that we can uniquely define its position. Okay, so this param uh, parameter of degree of freedom is very important in the analysis of mechanism. Okay, now in the last session I already told you that we will be having kinematic link as a basic building block of any mechanism. So when you will be having an assembly of kinematic links which are connected with kinematic joint and that complete assembly will be called as a mechanism only when any one of the link is fixed. The fixed link is also considered as frame of reference for other particular links. So if no link is fixed, it will be considered as a chain, kinematic chain. So kinematic link, then you will get, uh, if different links get connected through kinematic joint. Then if different number of uh, links are there and connected with the kinematic joint, it will form a kinematic chain. If it is open, open kinematic chain. If it is closed, closed kinematic chain. But in a kinematic chain, in any of the member is fixed. If any of the member is fixed in kinematic chain, it will become a mechanism. 
okay and for that mechanism we need to know the degree of freedom okay so we'll look at this concept from a very basic level right for example uh, with respect to before going into the mechanism part okay before going into the mechanism part we will look at this degree of freedom from a very uh, general perspective right for example see uh, we have a coordinate system right so uh, let's suppose this is our x axis this is y axis and this is what z axis clear x y z axis now uh, let's suppose if i am having a body okay consider there is a body here this is the body we have now the question is how many uh, motions are possible for this kind of body okay how many motions are possible so as we have this 3d uh, system here along x along y so how many motions are possible simply you need to understand there is one translation is possible in along x one translation is possible along y and one translation is possible along z like this is it clear total three translation apart from these three translation three rotations are also possible right rotation about x axis rotation about y axis and rotation about z axis so total three translation and total three rotations are possible so in general for any body in 3d space the degree of freedom we will be having is six please understand this point very very important part in general for any body in a space or in a three dimensional space we can say the degree of freedom will be six now in actual scenario you might have a degree of freedom less than six you will be asking sir why is it so because whenever that body is having connection with another body definitely some degree of freedom will be lost please understand this point whenever body gets connected with another body definitely some degree of freedom is going to be what lost because if a body like this one is freely available in a three dimensional space it will have what total six degree of freedom but when it get connected with any other body definitely some restriction will be coming there will be some constraints right there will be definitely some restrictions is coming with regards to the motion part so that's why some degree of freedom will be lost whenever there is a connection whenever there is a connection formed right so in general we should write here first of all okay in general degree of freedom will be equals to 6 and that 6 includes what 3 translational plus 3 rotational so that is the maximum possible degree of freedom we can have the maximum possible degree of freedom we can have is 6 for any body which is available in a three dimensional space clear any confusion please everyone if you have any doubt or any confusion you are having in this particular lecture please ask in the live chat box okay you have a direct option to interact so please ask in the chat box here itself right so that is what the maximum degree of freedom that any body can have in a three dimensional space fine so as i already told you when there is a connection formed some degree of freedom will be lost okay we'll see those cases also in our uh, syllabus of theory of machine we have to find out degree of freedom of a mechanism and which kind of mechanism simple planar mechanism so first of all what is simple mechanism what is planar mechanism that basics part we should be clear enough right okay now next part guys see so in uh, like we have written in general degree of freedom we should write maximum possible we should write maximum degree of freedom possible is 6 okay in actual actual degree of freedom will be 6 minus the restrictions that has been applied or that has been there in the system 6 minus restraints 
okay so the restrictions that are coming in the mechanism so total uh, maximum possible degree of freedom is 6 in actual reality degree of freedom will be somewhat less than 6 so why it is less than 6 because of some restrictions right and how that restrictions are coming into picture please we'll discuss that part in the later part of the lecture okay so i will tell you i will explain from where those restrictions are coming right now so in actual degree of freedom will be 6 minus the restraints restraints are nothing but the restrictions got it so i will give you more clarity on those restrictions how that restrictions are there in that particular mechanisms right now first of all as i told you you need to understand what is simple mechanism because the chapter the very first chapter in theory of machine is simple planar mechanism so simple mechanism means the mechanism which is having four links so if the mechanism uh, mechanism is having more than four links it becomes what compound mechanism right simple so simple mechanism which is having four links and if it is having more than four it is compound mechanism planar mechanism simply means a mechanism in which all the links are in the same plane all the links are in the same plane okay everything that all the parts all the kinematic links of a given mechanism will be on a same plane right so that is what the planar mechanism and in our syllabus we have to discuss about simple planar mechanism only so if you see in the gate examination always you will find a question from simple planar simple planar mechanism clear so mechanism which is having four links is called a simple mechanism and if it is having more than four it is called as compound mechanism and then finally planar mechanism where all the links lie in the same plane same particular plane all the links will be there and it is called as planar mechanism clear till this point everyone okay now we will move on to the topic of degree of freedom for simple planar mechanism okay now see so i have drawn this a plane here first of all uh, let us write this as x direction okay that is uh, our x direction this is x direction and this is y direction so this is what a plane we have selected here this is the plane we have selected right okay on this plane let us uh, take any uh, link uh, link any particular link we can take let's suppose this link name is ab so this link ab i have considered here now if i ask you what is the degree of freedom maximum degree of freedom possible for link ab tell me what will be the maximum degree of freedom for this link ab what will be your answer ab is a link on this particular plane so this plane is there okay so why i have drawn this plane so that you can understand all the links whatever i am whatever the links that i am having here it will be on the same plane that's why it will be called as planar mechanism right so that's why this plane i have taken so that ab link is on that plane so my question is again what is the degree of freedom what is the maximum degree of freedom for this link ab tell me what will be your answer tell me your answer in the chat box guys three it answer will be what three see the link ab can translate in x direction it can translate in y direction and it can rotate in x y plane one rotation is possible because this is a plane x y plane in that x y plane rotation is possible so along x translation along y uh, another translation and third motion possible is rotation here so we should write here maximum degree of freedom maximum degree freedom for link ab is 3 is it clear everyone right so maximum degree of freedom possible for link ab is 3 and from where this three uh, number came as i had already told you there will be two translation possible and one rotation is possible 
तो मैक्सिमम डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम पॉसिबल फॉर एनी लिंक ऑन अ प्लेन एनी लिंक ऑन अ प्लेन विल बी थ्री सो रिमेंबर मैक्सिमम डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ एनी लिंक ऑन अ गिवन प्लेन विल बी ऑलवेज थ्री एंड इन दैट टोटल थ्री डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम टू आर ट्रांसलेशन वन इज रोटेशन इज दिस पॉइंट क्लियर ओके नाउ लेट अस सपोज दैट ए बी लिंक दिस ए बी लिंक इज गेट कनेक्टेड विद अनदर लिंक I told you know whenever there is a connection form, you will understand. Whenever there is a connection form, you will find what there is some loss in the degree of freedom. Whenever there is a connection form, there will be always a loss of degree of freedom. So that part we will understand here. How the degree of freedom is lost whenever there is a connection. Okay, but till this point, I hope everyone is understood. Like why degree of freedom of link AB is three. If it is in a given 3D dimensional space. If that AB link was in the three dimensional space, in that case, answer will be what six for maximum degree of freedom. But as far as this case is concerned, AB link is there on the plane. AB link is on the plane. That's why only two translation is possible along x and along y, and one rotation. But if it is present in three-dimensional space, the maximum degree of freedom would have been six, three translation and three rotation. Clear? Now, next thing is, let's suppose AB gets connected with another link. Now, my question to you, everyone, is what would be the degree of freedom of link AB? What would be the degree of freedom for link AB? Please mention your answer in the chat box, everyone. what would be your answer okay if it is there as it is so degree of freedom will be 3 but let's suppose ab get connected with another link next point we will write Okay, link AB get connected with another link. So initially AB was like this, and that AB link get connected with uh, this one. Let's suppose another link. So now let's suppose and this angle is theta. Now please understand this point very carefully. So this is another link. The green color. With green color, I'm drawing the another link. Another link has been drawn with green link, green color. Okay, so that is what the another link. With this link, link AB gets connected here, and this is what the lower pair formation. Right, with lower pair formation. So link AB get connected with another link, and please mention here as lower pair. Okay. Lower pair means what? Surface contact. I hope you remember this thing. Surface contact. Is it clear? So link AB get connected with another link that is lower pair, and lower pair means what? Surface contact. Now. When initially, when we have talked about the degree of freedom of link AB, it is having degree of freedom three. Now, why I am telling now the degree of freedom become one? The answer is what degree of freedom is what one? Because the position of link AB will be defined by theta only. Only theta will be required. Only theta is the variable or the parameter needed to define the position of link AB. Are you getting my point here? Previously. Total three parameters will be required. Total three parameters will be required. Okay, but in this case, only one parameter will be required as it is having a connection with another link. So that parameter will be what theta. If theta is given to us, I can find out the position of link AB. Right? Only theta is what required. I can easily find out the position of link AB. Or that is the one thing. Another way. In another way also, you can understand. 
Now, link AB will have a motion with respect to what this link, uh, this another link, as with respect to this link. What kind of motion it will be having? That motion will be defined by theta parameter only. With this theta parameter only, the link AB motion will be defined now. So, it means degree of freedom becomes what? 1. But previously, as I told you, translation along x, along y and rotation. Now, in this case, AB cannot translate. Okay, AB cannot translate along x and y. It can have only the rotation. It can only have what? Rotation. That rotation will be defined by theta. That rotation will be defined by theta. I hope it is clear. So now, the degree of freedom for link AB is 1, which means previously when it is not connected with any link, it is having 3. Now, it is having 1. It means, very important point here, whenever lower pair is formed, whenever lower pair whenever lower pair is formed two degree of freedom is lost two degree of freedom is lost is it clear whenever lower pair is formed two degree of freedom will be lost that we have concluded here because previously link AB is having total 3 degree of freedom now it is having only 1 which means obviously 3 degree of freedom has been lost. So this is very important point. Now what about the higher pair? If the connection is what higher pair for example in this case it is lower pair but let us suppose if it is a higher pair in that case how much degree of freedom will be lost that is the next question okay. So please understand. for higher pair for higher pair see let's suppose this is the disk we are having like this okay for higher pair now this is the disk okay this is the disk now in this particular disk what will be the degree of freedom? There will be a rotation and there will be what? Translation is possible. Okay. So, we can write degree of freedom here in this particular case will be 2. Now, if the disk was not in contact with this another link, in that case it would have 3 degree of freedom. It would have what? 3 degree of freedom. But it is having 2 degree of freedom because now this particular disk is in contact with this link. For example, if the disk is like this, freely available in a plane, freely available in a plane. So, it can translate along this direction, along this direction and it can rotate also. Total degree of freedom for that disk will be what? 3. But now as this disk is in contact with this link, obviously it is a point contact, that is why it is higher pair. So, degree of freedom becomes what? 2. So, there is what? 1 degree of freedom lost here. There is what? 1 degree of freedom is lost in this particular case. So, we should write here. Whenever higher pair is formed, one degree of freedom is lost. One degree of freedom is lost. Okay, whenever higher pair is formed, one degree of freedom is lost. Clear? So, we have understood here, everyone, that whenever lower pair is forming, two degree of freedom is lost and whenever higher pair is formed, one degree of freedom is lost. Now, we can write down the degree of freedom formula, the generalized formula that we can directly use here. Okay. So, how to uh, develop that generalized relation? See, uh, let us write here, first of all, 
फॉर सिंपल प्लेनर मैकेनिज्म ओके लेट अस राइट इट इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड हियर ओके लेट वी राइट इट इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड बिकॉज इट विल टेक कंप्लीट स्पेस हियर विल राइट कंसीडर सिंपल प्लेनर consider simple planar mechanism with n number of legs with n number of legs okay clear so the formula that we will be having is degree of freedom is now as n number of link is there and we are talking about a mechanism out of n one has to be what fix out of n at least one link has to be what fix okay so the number of links that we need to count here okay for degree of freedom will be n minus 1 is it correct for calculation of degree of freedom how many links we need to consider n minus 1 actually total number of link is n only but in order to calculate degree of freedom how many links i need to consider n minus 1 now n minus links are available so what is the maximum possible degree of freedom if i'm talking with respect to a plane maximum possible degree of freedom will be 3 so n minus for n minus 1 link total degree of freedom will be 3 into n minus 1 are you getting my point For any one link, what is the maximum degree of freedom possible? Three. For n minus one link, how many degree of freedom will be there? Three into n minus one, na? Very basic. Okay, very basic discussion I am doing here. One link is having three degree of freedom. For n minus one link, how many degree of freedom? Three into n minus one. Simple funda, right? Okay. So this is the maximum possible degree of freedom we can have. this is a maximum possible degree of freedom that we can have fine but as i already told you whenever there is a lower pair formation two degree of freedom is lost so two multiplied by j now in this case what is j j is a binary joint lower pair formation whenever one lower pair is formed two degree of freedom is lost so minus 2 j is a number of binary joints and whenever a higher pair is formed One degree of freedom is lost, so we'll write here h. So this is our formula here, okay, for degree of freedom. Okay, and the name of this one is known as Kuzbak equation. Clear? Okay. now here you need to remember n is the number of link j number of binary joint h is the number of higher pair h is your number of higher pair clear okay so this is the formula we are having clear any doubt in this particular question guys if you have any particular doubt from this particular formula of degree of freedom so please ask in the live chat box right we will solve one problem also the so that you can understand how to use this particular formula okay we will solve one problem also but before that please tell me is it clear everyone how we have uh, derived the complete formula here okay i have given you all the logics here behind this particular formula all the logics we have discussed okay i hope it is clear everyone now uh, we will solve one question here
is it clear everyone so this is the mechanism in this mechanism we need to find out the degree of freedom degree of freedom we need to find out so we have a direct formula okay this is the formula we are having so in order to use this formula first of all we need to mention what is number of links number of binary joints and number of fire pair okay one by one we will uh, calculate all these values n j and h okay first of all number of uh, links always remember fixed link will be counted as always a single link no matter how many times it is fixed no matter wherever it is fixed okay always count fixed link as one so don't count this as fixed link one fixed link number two no this is also fixed link this is also fixed link so that's why always first we will mention the fixed link now you will be saying sir uh, why you are not considering this and this and this as a separate links so here again i am telling you go back to the lecture number uh, second where we have talked about the definition of kinematic link so while discussing the kinematic link what we have told okay what was the discussion discussion is whenever we will uh, whenever we are seeing any link to be a kinematic link there has to be what a relative motion there has to be what relative motion of a link with respect to another link if this link and this link are two separate links then they should have a some relative motion now tell me between this link and this link is there any relative motion no because both are fixed that's why wherever it is fixed it will be always counted as a same single link i hope this point is clear everyone so again and again i'm telling you this point guys wherever it is fixed please mark it as one so because while we have a discussion on kinematic link we have stressed on this point that kinematic link is that link which is having a relative motion with respect to another link if this link and this link were different then they should have some relative motion now obviously they can't have a relative motion though they will be considered as single link okay so fixed link i have mentioned then second link will be this slider then third link then this is come fourth link this is fifth link and this is sixth link so this is whenever lines are drawn this is acting as a single link okay this is actually a ternary link now coming back to the second point that is the j binary joints now here if you understand everyone how many links are get connected here link number 1 link number 2 link number 3 so it will be considered as a ternary joint and ternary joint is equivalent to two binary joint i hope this one is also clear everyone one ternary joint is equals to two binary joints how this is a ternary joint because link 1 link 2 and link 3 get connected so total three links to ternary joint 6 and 1 one binary joint two links get connected so binary joint 5 and 6 connected one binary joint 4 and 3 one binary joint then 1 and 4 one binary joint like this 4 and 5 one binary joint okay 1 and 4 4 and 5 5 and 6 6 and 1 4 and 3 these are the binary joints now Uh, we will mention all the details here number of links we have is 6 number of binary joints so uh, 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 2 and this is total 7 number of fire pairs there is no fire pairs so zero now i will use the formula here degree of freedom formula three n minus one minus two j minus h three n value is what six six minus one minus two into seven zero so six minus one five three into five fifteen fifteen minus uh fourteen you'll have degree of freedom as one so answer is what one here okay answer is what one now if degree of freedom answer is coming as zero it simply means it is a structure it is a structure if degree of freedom answer is 1 uh, 0 degree of freedom answer 1 is means what it is a constraint mechanism 
it is having a constraint mechanism, right? So, if degree of freedom answer is 0, then it becomes a structure. Please understand this point. A very good evening, mechanical word. Very good evening. Degree of freedom answer 0 means it is a structure. So, this was the question, practice problem for the degree of freedom. Clear? So, I hope everyone will remember this Kuzbeck equation. Very, very important. And what is the logic behind this formula? Directly we can write this formula also, but always remember the logic. Why this minus 2j and h is coming? So, I already told you that whenever a lower pair is formed, 2 degree of freedom will be lost. And whenever a higher pair is formed, 1 degree of freedom is lost. So, that is why minus 2j minus h. n minus 1 we have done because of out of total number of links. Let us suppose total number of link is n. Out of those total n number of links, any one link has to be what? Fixed. Then only it is called as mechanism. From the kinematic chain, what we have discussed, that any one link has to be fixed, then only it will be considered as a mechanism. So, that is why effective number of links will be considered for calculating of degree of freedom will be n minus 1. n minus 1 link will be considered for calculation of degree of freedom. Fine. Now, so that is known as Kuzbeck equation. Now, there is one more thing, Gr uh, Grubler criteria. Grubler criteria. Okay. Now, that part also we will discuss. See. Uh, consider a simple mechanism. Consider simple planar mechanism with degree of freedom goes to one and no higher pairs. Okay, and no higher pairs. Very, very important discussion we will be having here now. A simple planar mechanism I am considering and in that degree of freedom is what one I have taken and there is no higher pair. Okay. So, directly Kuzbeck equation I will be using 3n minus 1 minus 2j minus h. Okay. Degree of freedom answer is 1. 3 n minus 1 minus 2 j. H value is 0. Now, if I just open up this bracket, it will be 3 n minus 3. Okay. 3 n minus uh, 3. Minus 2 j. So, it will be 3 n plus uh, 3 plus 1 that is uh, 4 here. Okay. So, let me just again rewrite it. So, uh, 3 plus 1, 4 it will be there. Let us suppose 2j I am shifting here. So, 4 plus 2j equals to 3. We will keep 3n on the uh, left side, uh, sorry, right side only. Okay, we will keep 3n on the right side. Now, this is what uh, equation we are getting here. Now, what are the conclusions that we can draw out of this equation? 4 plus 2j equals to 3 into n. Correct? 4 plus 2j equals to 3n it is there. Now, if you focus on the left hand side, if you focus on the left hand side, 4 is a even quantity and 2 into j. No matter j is odd or even, it will be always even because whenever you multiply even quantity, you will always get even no matter it is odd or even, right? So, uh, 4 plus 2j, it is always even. Correct. Now, for LHS equals to RHS, obviously from this condition, this is LHS and RHS is 3N. For LHS equals to RHS, N has to be what? Even. Because the left hand side is even, so right hand side also be what? Even. Then only the LHS will be equals to RHS, right? So, RHS will be even when N value will be even. Okay. I hope this point is clear. If it is odd, then 3 multiplied 3 multiplied with any odd number becomes what? Odd only. So, then LHS and RHS will not be equal. 
रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एल एच एस एंड आर एच एस टू बी इक्वल फॉर एल एच एस एंड आर एच एस एन हैज टू बी इवन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट always even and n value should be even now what is the conclusion here any simple planar mechanism which is having degree of freedom 1 and there is no higher pair it cannot have a odd number of legs it cannot have odd number of legs that is a very very important conclusion that we can draw out of this particular analysis okay so please remember under what condition simple planar mechanism with the degree of freedom 1 and no higher pair only in that case we will have what number of links as always even obviously which means there will not be any case in which number of links can be odd odd number of links is not at all possible in this particular case of simple mechanism simple planar mechanism with degree of freedom 1 and no higher pairs clear so this is again a very important uh, analysis part is it clear everyone is it clear okay now moving on further next a uh, very important uh, discussion we will be having on redundant link redundant link and redundant degree of freedom this is a very very important discussion on degree of freedom now before entering into this part you should know that the formula that we have written degree of freedom that is goes back equation 3 into n minus 1 minus 2j minus h it is having one limitation what was the limitation the limitation is that it doesn't consider the orientation of the link it never consider the orientation of the link right please understand this point and that is what the biggest limitation and that limitation we will discuss here itself right now see redundant link now redundant link is that kind of a link which does not introduce any extra constraint in the mechanism right so very important point that you need to write it down in your notebook okay this is very important uh, once in a gate they have asked this question related to this concept they have asked one question already in the gate examination so redundant link are those links which do not introduce any extra constraint in the mechanism which means whether they are in the in the mechanism or not mechanism will behave same whether they are present in the system or that is in the mechanism whether they are present in the mechanism or not mechanism is going to behave same there will not be any effect on the mechanism whether they are in the system or not that is what the meaning of redundant link so that's why they should not be counted for calculation of the degree of freedom those redundant links should not be counted while calculating degree of freedom i hope you got the point right so because whether it is there or not it is not affecting the mechanism so then why we will consider it for the calculation of degree of freedom will not consider it right okay see the example so similar to that question only came in the gate examination there is a mechanism here okay now in this mechanism let us uh, consider this fixed link as one this is second link this is third link this is fourth link and this is fifth link so total five links are there total five links now apply the degree of freedom formula number of link is 5 uh, 5 minus 1 number of binary joints 1 2 3 4 5 6 4 5 okay, minus 4 4 into 3 12 2 into 6 also 12 so answer is 0 from the formula you will be getting answer is 0 answer of degree of freedom for this particular mechanism that we are getting from the formula is 0 which is wrong in this particular case which is wrong 
and why the formula is giving the wrong answer because the formula is not able to understand the redundant link here okay because it simply consider the number of links and the joints only it never consider the orientation of the member it never ever consider the orientation of the member what kind of orientation i'm talking about link 4 is placed with 2 and 5 link parallelly link 4 is placed parallel to 5 and 2 link so now if i am a if i remove this link number 4 mechanism is going to behave in a same manner let's suppose this is the input motion i have given this will be the output motion whether link 4 is there in the system or not it will behave like this only that's why the link 4 in this particular mechanism is a redundant link so what we will do we will remove it while calculating the degree of freedom we will not consider it and question is sir how we will uh, understand whether this any link is a redundant link or not you just need to visualize okay you just need to visualize whether any member in the given system if i remove any member from the given system whether it will uh, create any effect or not if it is not creating any effect whether it is there or not so that is what redundant link right and also from the orientation you can understand let's suppose in this mechanism if i place link 4 like this if i am placing the link 4 like this will it be a redundant link in that case no never never it will be a redundant link because it will not it it will what it will definitely it will definitely affect the mechanism but when link 4 is placed parallel to link 2 and link 5 it is not affecting the given mechanism okay so let me draw it in a uh, next slide here okay basic understanding i hope it is clear like any link which does not introduce any extra constraint that link is redundant link and we should not count it while calculating degree of freedom now so okay so uh, let us calculate the degree of freedom so as i told you here using formula 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 minus h uh, link is 5 answer is 0 but we should write it here like this is wrong because from the given mechanism we know that it cannot have a 0 degree of freedom from the given mechanism we can understand how it can be a structure because if I provide this as an input motion definitely output motion will be like this how it can be a structure from the formula we are getting degree of freedom 0 so in that case it should be a structure are you getting my point degree of freedom answer is 0 so it should be a structure will it be a structure is it possible that this particular mechanism will be considered as a structure because we are getting answer of degree of freedom as 0 no never because it is not a structure because if i provide some input motion to this link definitely output motion i will be getting it is a mechanism so formula is giving us the wrong answer here the point is formula is giving us the wrong answer so degree of freedom now we will calculate and we will get the correct answer here because we have removed the redundant link three into n minus one okay number of link now it is four minus uh, 4 and number of binary joints are 4 also uh, 3 into 3 9 9 minus 8 that is 1 this is the correct answer so let me put it here link 1 link 2 we will write here link 4 is redundant link link 4 is redundant link is that clear everyone fine okay now as i told you one more thing i will discuss here like in the mechanism this was the mechanism that we are having. 
So all these three links are parallel to each other. So definitely what happens here that uh, this mid link will be considered as a redundant link. Okay. So uh, let me mention the link number, link 1, link 2, 4 and 5. But now consider a different mechanism, another uh, mechanism I am drawing here and you should tell me whether the link will be considered as a redundant link or not. Tell me, in this case, can I say uh, link number, let's suppose, link number 4 will be a redundant link in this case? No, link 4 cannot be considered as a redundant link. How it can be? Because if I provide, how you will understand whether it is redundant or not? Let's suppose if I provide a motion here, it will definitely obstruct the motion of link 2. Okay, it will definitely create some resistance against the motion of link 2. So, because of the orientation of link 4 in this case, it is definitely going to affect the mechanism. But in this particular case, because of the orientation of link 4 is such that it is parallel to link 2 and 5, definitely it is not going to affect the mechanism, whether it is there or not, right, like that. So, we should write here, okay, we should write this point here very clearly that link 4 is redundant link in this particular case. Link 4 is redundant link and in this case link 4 is not redundant. is not redundant link. Clear? Done? Okay. Moving to the next part again guys. This is a uh, degree of freedom. Redundant degree of freedom. What do you mean by redundant degree of freedom? Please understand. If I uh, like if any particular link is moving in the mechanism but it is not affecting the mechanism. For example, I am moving any one particular link in a given mechanism. But that particular link is moving and it is not affecting other parts of the mechanism. Then that kind of motion that that particular link is performing without affecting other links, that is known as redundant degree of freedom. Now you will be saying sir, how is it possible? If the all links are get connected with each other, so if I provide motion to any one link, definitely that link motion will further transmit it to another links with which it is in contact. Yes, your answer, your point is completely true. But there is a, there will be some cases definitely where you will find that any one link is moving and because of its motion, another links are not affected. In the, such scenarios, we will call it as a redundant degree of freedom. I will give you some example here also. See. Okay. Uh, now see, link fixed considered as link 1, link 2, 3 and link 4. How many, uh, how many members we are having in this case? 4. Degree of freedom formula if I apply here, 4 minus 1 because n number, uh, n is what? Number of links. So 4 minus 1. Okay, fine. 2 into j. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, uh, th 4 minus 1, 3, 3 into 3, 9, 9 minus 8 is what 1? Degree of freedom answer is 1. But this answer is again wrong here. 
becomes actual answer of degree of freedom in this case is zero. Now we will say, sir, why is it zero? Because consider this link number three. Consider the link number three. If I provide some motion to link three, it will easily move. It will easily move out of the mechanism. Because see, this is what the slots. Link three is placed in such slots. So if I provide motion to link three, it will slide out and come out of the mechanism. It will definitely slide and will come out of the mechanism without affecting the mechanism. Without affecting the mechanism. So that kind of motion that link three is having, it is called as redundant degree of freedom. Because what kind of motion it is having that it is not affecting other mechanism, other parts of the mechanism. I hope you are getting the point. Whenever in a mechanism, okay, whenever there is a motion in the mechanism, which is not affecting other links, it will be considered as redundant degree of freedom. Clear this point. Now, again, this particular mechanism, I can draw it in a different way also. Okay, for example, see. In this case, please everyone tell me, in this case, can you tell me the degree of freedom will be 0? Link 2, link 3 and link 4. Okay, but before that, uh, tell me, before telling me the answer of degree of freedom, plus uh, first of all, tell me, if I provide motion to link 3 in this particular case, which is now having this kind of shape. So, if I provide motion to link 3, will other part of a mechanism will be affected or not? Will it get affected because of the motion provided to link 3? Answer, yes or no? My question to everyone here is, if I provide motion to link 3, will it affect other parts of the mechanism? Yes or no? What will be your answer? Yes, definitely it is going to affect then how it can be called as a redundant degree of freedom? Never. In this case, if I provide motion to 3, definitely other parts will not get affected because of the orientation. So, link 3 has been placed in such a way that if I provide a motion to link 3, it will come outside without affecting other parts of mechanism. That's why it is having a redundant degree of freedom. But in this case, we can't say link 3 is having redundant degree of freedom. In this case, we can say, okay, in this case, we can say, so whenever there is a redundant degree of freedom, we have to subtract that redundant degree of freedom from the final answer. So final answer from the formula we are getting is 1. Subtract the redundant degree of freedom. That is what 1 redundant degree of freedom. So resulting answer will be 0. Resulting answer of this particular mechanism will be 0. Okay, so let me mark it here. Degree of freedom actual will be 0 because the redundant degree of freedom we have to subtract answer is 1 from the formula redundant degree of freedom is 1 subtracting both the values you will get the answer is 0 in this case degree of freedom answer will be what 1 only because in this case there is no redundant degree of freedom for link number 3 so in general the modified formula okay What is the modified formula we have? Three into n minus one, okay. Let 
let us write n minus n r redundant degree of freedom uh, redundant number of links redundant number of links minus 2j minus h minus redundant degree of freedom like that so this will be the modified formula this will be the modified formula here guys redundant degree of freedom you have to subtract okay the binary joints will be according to the new diagram when you have removed the when you have removed the what the redundant link okay and this is the redundant degree of freedom fr is our redundant degree of freedom this is redundant link okay this is what the redundant link is it clear everywhere fine so you can apply this formula directly here so like this one degree of freedom we have to apply a formula n minus n r minus 1 minus 2 j minus h minus f r so three number of links we are having as what uh, five in this case redundant link is one okay so redundant link you have subtracted okay now resulting binary joints okay now you don't need to count the binary joints here okay because the redundant link number four already removed so if you remove link four one two three and four will be the binary joint no redundant degree of freedom zero answer no higher pair zero answer so it becomes three uh, four minus one becomes uh, three two into four that is eight answer will be what one like this never please never ever you should do a mistake here while writing binary joints binary joints you need to write once you have removed the redundant link once you have removed the redundant link then you should calculate the binary joints it should not be initially you will be calculating one two three four five six six binary joints in that case you will be getting this as a 12 9 minus 12 you will get a wrong answer here then okay binary joints you need to write once you remove the once you remove the redundant link once you remove the redundant link then we will get the answer okay so this much uh, basic clarity you should be having you should not be doing this uh, silly mistakes there is it clear everyone fine so i hope this degree of freedom concept is clear to everyone okay so two important uh, point you need to remember first is the kuzbak equation in the kuzbak equation very important point that whenever a lower pair is formed two degree of freedom will be lost and whenever higher pair is formed one degree of freedom will be lost this is very very important point with regards to simple planar mechanism simple mechanism means four links planar means all the links has to be in same plane based on that this conclusions we have drawn okay i hope you have enjoyed this particular lecture on degree of freedom from theory of machine subject if you really like this session please share it with your uh, college mates okay you can share it wherever you have joined the telegram groups share this lecture to maximum guys so that they can bit they can get benefited from this particular foundation series of theory of machine because we are discussing all the topics from the very basic level okay and after that we are going to discuss the numerical part also because i'm telling you if you are attending this foundation lecture series you will never feel any challenge in theory of machine subject because we are discussing each and everything in so much detail and you will find interesting also because in upcoming lectures we will be using animation part for different mechanisms like crank slotted mechanism, width worth mechanism, four bar mechanism, different different me animations we are going to see. Because once the animation you have seen then automatically you will be able to visualize what kind of motion the link is having. That visualization part will be clear, we will never face issue that okay sir this mechanism is there but I am not able to understand how this link is moving how what kind of motion it can have so all those concerns i have taken care will be using the animation part which will enhance your learning only right 
so thank you so much guys we'll meet you in the next lecture so till then stay tuned but please create the notes parallelly with the classes okay thank you so much bye bye